up guys, Al here from AM Training. So as you notice, I'm not Dan. I don't have that cute little accent he has or that blue nice room that he has. But I did want to make sure I represent his channel correctly. So I'm nice, you know, I'm sporting out the nice little blue shirt because it's his favorite color. I even gave myself a nice little haircut so my drapes uh, match the carpet if you know what I mean. So let's go ahead and talk about what I think is important. And as you see, I'm doing a nice little Asian squat here. And that's what I'm going to talk about is the third world squat. I believe the third world squat is a great thing to have and a great thing to do throughout the day because it's going to help out with performance. So you have your mobility and your performance. A lot of top coaches like Dan John, um, he, he loves the, the nice little third world squat. Um, also, you know, everyone knows Brett Contreras now, the glute guy. He's also a fan of uh, goblet squats. And that's... They both like to uh, teach the squat in a goblet squat form. And there's a good reason for that is because you get nice and deep and also allow the, um, you know, your hips to really open up. Uh, coordination is uh, going to prevent you from getting into this. But like I said, if you do it more frequently, you'll address that problem as well. So as you see in my other videos um, of me squatting, that this position, I'm not afraid of it. I'm not afraid of the hole going into it. Um, I haven't used that nice little stretch reflex as I come down and uh, explode straight up, but uh, I'm not, you know, scared of the hole because I'm always in the hole. Um, that's what she said. I'm always in the hole and, um, you know, the hole is my home. So let's go ahead and talk about how we can get in a third roll squat. Um, so you got to definitely practice what uh, practice it every day. It's a skill. And you notice a lot of Asian or third world countries, um, they sit like this. There's a reason why they sit like this is because we don't have chairs. And also, it's pretty darn comfortable if you get the, if you maintain it. So it's really hard to get into this position if you don't really uh, use this position. But, um, you know, in the third world country, we don't have chairs and there's all these types of bugs that want to eat your crotch. So you definitely don't want to sit on the floor uh, while, you know, bugs try to, uh, to tear the crap out of your crotch. So the thing, the three things that I think that are important to have a nice third roll squat is uh, the things that help out would be number one would be dorsiflexion or the the, the mobility in your ankle. Ankle uh, ankle mobility is gonna play a lot into it because if you notice a lot of people when they come down, um, like uh, you know they don't have that mobility. The, in order for them to come down, their heel raises up, and that's because they don't have that dorsiflexion. A lot of people have uh, bad dorsiflexion or tight calves and a good way to measure that, um, the standard is uh, roughly around, everyone's going to be different depending on how big their feet, or, uh, feet are or how tall their tibia is. But a good rule of thumb is that you should have at least a good four inches of, um, in front of uh, your knee coming down coming out forward. This should be a nice four inches, but again, we're on Dan's channel, so let's go ahead and go centimeters. Uh, it's 2.5, so using my Asian math, I promised him I'd put some Asian math in here. That would be a good 10.16 um, centimeters going forward. And like I said, everyone's going to be different, but the key thing here is to make sure it tracks over the toe and that you have that good uh, 10 inches, uh, 10 centimeters going forward, because a lot of people, they'll start to go forward and they'll actually substitute um, kind of turning out their foot in order to get that mobility. So um, that's one thing that needs to be addressed. So uh, the key points that I said that will prevent you from uh, getting into this position are the dorsiflexion or that uh, calf tightness that I was talking about. The second one is um, your, hip, uh, your hip stability. So basically, if you're not stable, if you can't handle this squat position um, because you're not, your hips aren't strong enough, there's certain ways that will help you or certain techniques that will help you get there. So we'll slowly break that down. One of them is when you are um, getting into that position, if you can't hold this because either you, you, have, you finally did address that dorsiflexion problem, stretching out that soleus there, that ankle mobility, you can also... Um, uh, if you don't have that strength, you can hold on to something, like what I'm holding here, and get into that position and, you know, do that for a good, uh, good amount of uh, time of the day. Um, you want to try to be frequent about it. So at least do it once every day because it's a skill. And like Eric Cressy says, um, you, you, wanna be, you don't want to fall into a 23-1 rule, where basically 23 
that one hour you're in the gym, you do great. But then that 23 hours in the gym, you're, you're crap. It's basically, you know, you're obsessing over one hour when, what about the other 23? So um, I like to watch TV in this position. I like to uh, do videos in this position. I like to, oh, that kind of sounded dirty. <laughs> I like to uh, make sure I, uh, I even, you know, give my uh, son a bath in this position. I'm, I'm, you know, giving him a bath and I'm still in this position because you want to really practice the skill. So, like I said, you can hold on to something. In my case, I'm using a table, um, but you can use like a doorknob at a, on, a, on a door, of course, and uh, sit back into that position and really, um, this is basically acting as a false uh, stability for your hip. So, as you get better, you'll slowly wean off of it and then you'll still hold out your hands there to counterbalance. So that's why a goblet squat is wonderful because it also counterbalances you also. But as you get better, you, you probably won't even need it anymore. Um, and that's uh, addressing that second issue. So Johnny Candido made a great video about how the butt wink uh, when you're in the bottom of the squat isn't such a big deal. And um, that he said that hamstring mobility and flexibility doesn't have doesn't play a huge role in um, getting down deep and um, getting into that position. But a lot of physical therapists that I work with, they definitely say that hamstring um, flexibility will play a role into getting uh, deep into that squat because um, if you think about it, when you're in that position, um, it is going to give you a pull and you're basically um, using your erectors and synergistically your, your hip flexors into uh, trying to get into that anterior uh, tilt. Basically, you're trying to prevent that butt wink, so um, you need to make sure that your hip flexors are strong enough and also your spinal erectors are strong, strong enough as well. So they both play synergistically in order to um, make sure that you don't get into that huge butt wink that, um, that you're in. But it's not too big of a problem, especially if you're unloaded uh, and you know, just a nice little squat like I am right now. So I'm going to go ahead and recap what I said here. The three things that will prevent you from getting into this nice position is um, the, your dorsiflexion mobility. Like I said, you want to go ahead and um, work on that uh, soleus muscle. Um, even in the squat position you can work on it. Like what I do is I lean to one side and lean to the other. And basically we're stretching that that soleus muscle. There's a difference between if you do it standing with your legs straight and doing it um, with your knee bent. There's two muscles in the calf there. You really want to focus on that lower one. The second one is um, stability. So if you're not, if your hips aren't stable then um, your, your glute strength is not going to help you stay in this position. And you know, I can stay in this position pretty long because I'm pretty stable, but uh, you work up uh, into that, you work up into that, you have to work up to that time. So like I said, maybe um, while you're watching TV, definitely give this a try. And you want to make sure that you're pushing your knees out because your, your, your knees are going to want to cave in because your glute is kind of weak in this position. It's in a nice kind of stretch position, so you want to make sure that it's in that position there. Um, the third one, like I said, is uh, the coordination issue. You can definitely um, benefit from doing this more frequently a day. Um, if you're getting water, if you're tying your shoe, make sure you do this. A lot of people, instead of um, going into that position, they try to avoid it by having their um, heels up. So when they get down into something, they do that. But that's not going to be beneficial because you don't squat like that. So. So the key thing here is try to practice this more frequently. Um, you guys can't just jump into jump into it right away where it's going to be, you know, you're going to stay in this position for a, a total, you know, an hour or two hours a day, um, just like a minute or two a day, and try to get into this position more frequently. If you need to pick something up off the floor, you know, just pick it up like that. Um, I mean, you're going to get a little bit of looks, and it's hard to do it in slacks as well. So um, I'm lucky enough where these are stretchy pants where I can do this all day um, while I'm helping out patients get into, um, you know, do their exercise as well. So guys, make sure you go ahead and try this out throughout the day um, and do it more frequently because you don't want my grandma, my 80-year-old grandma to, she squats more than you guys. So, and I'm not talking about intensity-wise, I'm talking about more frequently. She has the mobility to do this and with this, she is more... Um, active throughout the day. So this is an easy thing to maintain as you do it more often. It's just hard to obtain if you lose it. I mean babies are able to get down and drop into this position perfectly. It's just as we get older we try to find shortcuts. Alright guys that was it. Train hard, train smart.